a while ago, but do you remember the first day that you said that you uh, you said you started feeling sick? If I talk you through it, can you try and give me a day that you felt better? That's kind of cool. Okay. Have you been to any other events or places other than that particular day? Um, yeah, oh yeah, I understand completely what you're saying. Awesome. Uh, taste or social gatherings. Um, it could be dinner parties, birthday parties, sporting events, things like that. Hi, I'm calling because uh, Washington State Department of Health was notified that you were in close contact with someone who tested positive for COVID-19. And uh, we got some information we'd like to give you. I have two perfect. <clears throat> and uh, do you know if you've been uh, tested for COVID-19? Um, we recommend that you stay at home um, until the 17th and monitor, your, monitor yourself for illness during this time. One of your household contacts tested positive and they'll be auto populated on the list. And so we'll be closed. Okay, what county do you live in? Do you need any other assistance of any type to help um, to safely stay away from other people? Yes, okay. So uh, let's say an individual tests positive for COVID-19. Um, once they have that conversation with the provider that ordered the test or requested the test, um, they will notify the, the person that they've been uh, contracted the disease. Then, uh, then they will, their information will go to Department of Health. Uh, and they will go into a, a database. So, so that secondary contact goes into another uh, list of people to call. That person will be called and said, hey, um, I'm, I'm Chris from DOH. I understand that we've been notified that you have been in contact with somebody who has been tested positive. They won't mention who it was, so there's that confidentiality. Uh, they will recommend that they self-isolate self or self-quarantine. If they have symptoms, they'll ask them those questions. If they've, if they've got any symptoms, they'll encourage them to contact their medical provider. Don't go to the hospital necessarily. Uh, they'll, uh, and then if, they, if their provider recommends a test, then they'll do that. But again, that information shows the, the potential progression of the virus from the initial patient who we contacted to a second person. And so that information goes to the Department of Health. They will look at that uh, graphically and uh, geographically and find out how is that spreading. And then if they need to uh, notify the county that, or jurisdiction that that potential case lives in, uh, if there's a if there's a chain of other events that they maybe got went to a common place, uh, in fact I believe it was four different uh, instances. Somebody on my team was able to connect them with a resource that they needed. For instance, uh, one person said that they were were homebound and and weren't able to get out and get some food, and they said, "Boy, it should be nice if I could get access to some food." So we looped back with a, a contact with the Department of Health, and then called them back right away and say, "Here's a service that actually provides food directly from a food bank, and we'll deliver it to you." I think one of the cool things about the National Guard is that we are all members of our state, right? We're neighbors with the people that we're talking on the phone. We've volunteered to serve in this capacity. Uh, yes, we're being compensated for it, but we're volunteering in this capacity. So I think that from the initial mindset, we are, we're wired to help people, especially in the state of Washington. So, so that's a great starting point. And so when, when Department of Health comes to us and says, here's what you need to do in order to help people, then, then that's our, I think our guardsmen are very they're wired for that initially. Then uh, we're receptive as a, as a team. We have an internal structure of, of different supervisory skills. We've got a very diverse workforce. I mean, I have a, a physician's assistant. I have a wheeled vehicle mechanic. Uh, pretty much everybody between. So we're a very diverse team. Uh, everybody's got something to bring to the, uh, to the mission. And uh, we're just happy to work together and partner with DOH. As far as training goes, uh, the military typically has um, a lot of personal information, kind of not floating around, but there is personal information that you need to know um, about people. So we already have some prior training as far as maintaining people's personal information safely. Um, that was reinforced for about a week um, of a lot of, it was mostly training on um, just m handling personal information correctly um, and making sure that we don't say people's names when we're talking about it even in office. Um, we use people's case ID number that they get assigned and to pull the their name from that ID number is a couple of steps. Um, so that's it's behind some software but a lot of it is us just having training in handling this information the correct way. A lot of the folks that I've been in contact with have been 
you know, your, your husband and wife, you're, you're multiple, people, multiple people in the household. And so when you get on the phone and you're able to kind of make sure that they know, hey, if you need to stay inside, um, that spreading that sort of information and, and ensuring that people understand, like, this is coming from the state, this is an official, I mean, it's not a mandate, we can't force them to do it, but we, you know, this is the state's recommendation that you stay inside. I think it makes people realize that it's an important, uh, really an important thing to stay inside and try to stay away from even grocery stores and that sort of stuff. Um, so being able to talk to, like, multiple people in a household and just kind of driving that point home that, hey, this is what we recommend, and uh, it, it, you really feel like people are getting that uh, that message, which is saving lives. This specific job and the guard in general uh, really helps out the, the the people of the state. Um, you know whether you know I haven't been able to yet, but whether we're responding to a natural disaster or something like this um, that's affecting people, um, we're really I, I really feel like we're helping people, and I, I hope that people take our message of uh, staying home seriously.